This week in South Florida, a controversy and confusion led Miami-Dade School Board to reject an LGBTQ History Month. A spillover crowd and hours of heated speeches ended with all but one board member rejecting the designation of a month to celebrate LGBTQ identity this school year, and also rejected the idea of teaching high school seniors about two landmark Supreme Court cases. That vote may be the clearest indication yet of the effects of Florida's new parental rights law. School board chair, vice chair, Steve Gallen is one of those who rejected LGBTQ month after supporting it last year. Steve, it's good to see you. Welcome to the program. Uh, good morning, Glenn. I'm glad to be here. Thank you. So let's start out with, does this really violate in your mind the parents' rights in education law? Because that seemed to be the rationale for the vote. I think the implementation definitely has uh, some potential consequences for uh, violations to occur. This is not something that I've only uh, 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 contemplated. This is something that has been expressed by teachers uh, in the field who are very, very concerned relative to some of the consequences that can be levied against them individually for violations to uh, this particular law. So but, let, but, well, 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 let me just, um, and I don't mean to interrupt, I just don't want to let that moment pass because were the things you're hearing from teachers this kind of what I'm what I'm seeing is a chilling effect is what you're talking about is that valid is this something particularly for this vote or in general after the law uh, after the law after the law and Glenna this was something that I expressed actually in committee so before we actually had the school board meeting I did share my sentiments and the communications that I personally received from teachers from the field uh, there is something that is called academic freedom. So when we get down into the specifics of what uh, courses and what particular topics should be taught, uh, those things definitely resonated with teachers, specifically with the discussion around CRT, around the uh, Parental Bill of Rights. So teachers are very much aware, very much in tune, and very much concerned that they don't want to uh, cross the line. So we, uh, I did have concerns relative to implementation. Uh, the law speaks specifically to K through three for instruction, but when you look at a school-wide, a district-wide initiative that could potentially have implications uh, for the entire district, teachers did express concerns. But Glenn, I want to just say something. I know we have a short amount of time. I want to be very, very clear. What happened last Wednesday with respect to this vote? Schools and students and teachers can still celebrate. They can still recognize and teachers can still teach those particular cases with respect to the LGBTQ uh, issues that came up. So I want to be very, very clear. There was nothing taken away. There was nothing that curtails. That it, there is nothing that precludes. We, in fact, have an anti-discrimination policy in the district, and we have an opportunity and an obligation to let students and teachers be able to express themselves and their individuality in a way that does not disrupt, disrespect, or, or devise a school. So I want to be very, very clear about that because I've heard a narrative that something was taken away, something is being prevented, and that is patently false. Okay, I, just for the record, that is not our narrative, right? That's another narrative. But No, no, but just... absolutely, absolutely, Glenn. No, no, that's okay. not your narrative. I wanted to just get that out for the public. I had several phone calls even just before this interview to kind of clarify those things that I know not only as a policymaker, but things that I serve witness to as a high school principal for seven years. Okay, so let me just clarify then, what you just said was an individual teacher can teach, has some kind of academic freedom, can talk about LGBTQ month, uh, celebrate the culture, and yet you're saying that the board voted against it because it might violate the parents' rights in education law, which incidentally your own school board attorney said it probably would not. He kind of cleared it. So I'm, I'm having a little bit of cognitive dissonance here. So teachers can uh, teach it even though the board doesn't support it? Let me be very clear. This case, the, the item had two recommendations. The item had a recommendation, one, which is to recognize and celebrate. Those recognitions and celebrations can occur at a school site. Most often those recognitions and celebrations are student-led and can be facilitated through a, an academic advisor. Uh, secondly, in the recommendation, it was about the teaching of two specific Supreme Court cases. Uh, those, cor those cases can still be taught within the context of a course that addresses Supreme Court cases, such as uh, Plessy versus Ferguson, Brown versus the board, Roe versus Wade, the Dobb case. Supreme Court cases are definitely uh, on the books to be taught in the appropriate context at the appropriate level. 
So those, for anyone who might not be clear, those Supreme Court cases that you're talking about are the two landmark cases that gave the LGBTQ community uh, rights to marry, civil rights, and rights not to be discriminated against in the workplace. So, so those are Supreme Court cases. That is history, no matter what Absolutely. it's about. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. And so, teacher can teach those cases within the context of their course. Absolutely. Okay. So um, on Wednesday, pretty heated meeting. You heard a lot of passionate speeches from, from people with all kinds of perspectives. How much do those kinds of speeches and those kinds of crowds impact what you and your fellow board members do? I think I can't speak for my fellow colleagues, but I can tell you, and if you've had an opportunity to watch me during a school board meeting, I don't come in with any predispositions. I do listen to either side, and I find it somewhat, you know, interesting that, uh, and I'm, it's not a defensive posture. Listen, I understand the passion, the conviction uh, relative to this particular issue. We went into this meeting with this particular agenda item, knowing that it had the potential for a great degree of divisiveness, a great degree of passion, and a great degree of, uh, of, 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 of um, emotion. So we anticipated that on either side of this issue. Uh, but what we do understand is that we have an opportunity and we have a public hearing for a reason. And I've been the one that listens to the public hearing, uh, take the feedback, look at all sides of the issue, and I make a decision. I had a constituent in my uh, that spoke at that meeting, Glenna. She is not a member of the Proud Boys. She is not a member of Moms for Liberty. She is not a member of any partisan operative. She is a 70 plus year old stakeholder in District 1 a lifelong Democrat, if I might add, and a lady who has some strong faith, and she spoke at the meeting. And so this is not an operation relative to pressure from either side, but I understand and respect the passion on either side. Just last month, we had some people that celebrated our position on the textbook issue, and Glenna, you had some people, the same people, uh, have uh, loathed the decision that we made just last Wednesday. So you know, you read my mind because I was just going to ask you about that that textbook decision you reversed, not you personally, uh, Chair Perla Hantman in that very close vote first was voting to reject the book after the same sort of heated meeting, changed her vote a few weeks later. That one change of vote now has that textbook back in the schools. Um, some people <laughs> objected to some of the sex ed components of it. Parents have an opt out. Why is this different? Why, is, why was this Wednesday different than that Wednesday? Well, I, well, I want to I want to hone in on on just that that reality. Some of the same stakeholders that applauded uh, that decision have now condemned this decision, and they brought forth some level of condemnation with respect to uh, this is a an act of homophobia. It is not. Uh, I don't want to get into the whole narrative that I have a good friend that's black, but I have a sibling, my brother, who I love, who I care about who I'm passionate about, he's gay. Uh, so this is not about any of those particular things, but it's just ironic. So what's the difference, Glenna? The difference is the textbook issue went through a process. It is a process of school adoption for textbooks that is driven by the state. Uh, that recommendation was based on a hearing officer, and that uh, implication had uh, uh, ramifications for instruction, meaning if students did not have that resource in the classroom, teachers would not be able to teach to those particular standards. So the difference with this particular item is that this is a celebration and a recognition by which it has been described as symbolic in nature. Very important symbolism. Let me be very, very clear. It's very uh, important that everybody feels a part of our, our experiences in our school system, in our schools, and in our classrooms. Mm -hmm. But that is the major difference. One has significant implications for instruction and curriculum and teaching and learning, and this celebration did not. Dr. Steve Gallen, Vice Chair of Miami-Dade School Board, great to have you with us. Appreciate your time. Always. Thank you.